I'm George Demarest, Unixware Product Marketing Manager. I'm Jenny Grimes, Unixware Product Marketing Manager. We're here today to help you learn how to sell Unixware. Before we get into Unixware 2 and why customers are going to care about what's in our new product, we need to take a step back and look at Novell's overall vision and where Unixware fits within that vision. The best operating system put out in the last 10 years. As most of you know by now, that vision is something called pervasive computing. The idea of connecting people to information and to each other, enabling them to act on that information anytime, anywhere. But in order for Novell to deliver on that vision, we have to provide a fairly sophisticated networking infrastructure. If somebody asks me about Unixware, um, I tell them that I think this is a really good time in this industry to, uh, to become a, a Unix purist. Uh, Novell, with what they've done, what they're doing, the course they're pursuing, I think is leading that charge. A fundamental part of that networking infrastructure is a line of business application platform, and that is Unixware. Line of business application platform, that's a fairly large arena. So how is it that you're going to find customers within a topic that broad? Well, that's part of the beauty of the positioning of Unixware. The fact that it can solve customer problems all the way from work group, departmental environments, all the way up to legacy, more mainframe types of environments. Given that, Novell's Unix Systems Group has a mission to establish Unix and Novell's Unixware offering as the preferred application server for business computing. So how are we going to do this with Unixware 2? Well, let's first take a look at what Unixware 2 offers as a business application platform. First and foremost is excellent scalability and excellent performance. Next, Unixware offers its customers a very reliable and fault-resilient and secure platform. Unixware is pure System 5 Unix. That means multitasking, multi-user, and an effective client and server platform. And as with any product from Novell, Unixware offers transparent networking and the best network integration out there. The business critical aspect of Unixware are the applications that it runs. Over 3,500 applications now and growing monthly. Another list that is rapidly growing is the list of hardware devices now supported with Unixware 2. Not only is the list growing, but the actual power of the systems are growing. And this means better database performance, and Unixware supports every major database already. Think of it, the hot, hottest Unix available today, Unixware 2.0, the hottest database, Oracle 7 with the parallel features, all put together in one product, Oracleware, it's a winner. To finish out the list, of course, is supporting a rich development environment for those customized applications and application programmers. So we may have the right product with the great features that customers want, but if we're not in the right market at the right time, we haven't done our customers much good or our resellers. So let's take a second to look at the market. Unixware brings to uh, SAS Institute's business the customer base a large volume, a large potential volume of Unix platforms that our customers are looking for. The good news is that Unix does have the momentum. This chart from ID show, IDC shows by 1998 there will be 2.5 million new units going out the door. But the skeptics among our customers may say, oh, a lot of that's going to be risk-based or spark-based. But that's not necessarily true. If you look at the next chart, again from IDC, they show by 1998, half of the units going out the door are Intel-based. That is Novell's focus, Unixware on Intel. And if we do our job right, we should be able to claim an awful lot of those units. That gets my attention if I'm a reseller. Indeed, and we have done our job right. And th the idea of selling Unix into network networks is also a fundamental part of the market that we're approaching here. Uh, the, this idea has not been created by Novell. Our customers have been coming to us and saying, you've got to integrate better with Unix. So in the release of Unixware, plus the integration of Netware, we are focusing directly on a very real market that exists today. This one chart from Forrester shows you the real numbers behind this thinking. One out of every three Fortune 1000 network lands right now has Unix in it. Our challenge as Novell is to give you all a Unix that's easy to put there in the first place. That's certainly one of the themes that you'll hear repeatedly in Unixware 2. In Unixware 2, there are seven win themes, and we will go through each of these. Number one, first and foremost, price performance. Next, ease of ownership. Next, reliability, then security, 
then network transparency, then applications, and last, device support. Given these seven points, let's look more specifically at just what Unix Wear 2 provides. Unix Wear 2, what's hot? Well, at the top of that list, I'd have to say price, performance, and scalability. Okay. And we've approached this problem from three areas. One is symmetrical multiprocessing, the second is multi-threading, and the third is other. Other includes Pentium optimizations and asynchronous I.O. Okay, multiprocessing. Oh, what's the big deal? I mean, HP's had multiprocessing on the HP 9000s for years. Sun's had it with the Spark stations, and SCO's had it. The implementation was done with consulting with our major OEMs and other specialists within the industry who have extensive knowledge of that. So we've been able to glean a lot of knowledge of, from practical application of symmetrical multiprocessing and roll out a new Unix platform that takes advantage of this. This makes a kernel that is compatible with earlier versions of Unixware, but provides greater performance because of the machines that are running symmetrical multiprocessing. Okay, and you said multi-threading was one of the three approaches that we have to price performance. Again, I'd have to say, if I were a salesperson, so what? Microsoft says they've got multi-threading in NT. Why would we be any better? The idea of multi-threading is the idea of parallelism. Yes, other operating systems have multi-threading, but many of these systems provide multi-threading as an add-on to their existing system. Mm -hmm. With Unixware 2, we've been able to begin multi-threading the system from the ground up. So disk drivers, network drivers, the operating system itself, the file systems, the protocol stacks. It, I would say the extent of how Unixware has been threaded is really the differentiator here. And that parallelism will show up in great scalability and great performance. Because that is the so what. I, I mean, it's great that we've got probably the most sophisticated multiprocessing out there, that we've done the most thorough job of multi-threading a, a kernel and operating system and the user space, and we've got the infamous category other. But the so what is scalability. I have to provide a architecture that will support hotels with 45 rooms or hotels in remote regions with 1,200 rooms, et cetera one terminal up to a hundred terminals. So I needed something that was scalable across that entire spectrum. Now we gotta step back a second and define scalability. Scalability to us means I buy a processor, I put it in the machine, I get the value of that processor. Okay, so if I buy two processors, I get the value of two processors, right? Wrong. The problem is on a linear scalability line, that's theory. You know, that's Intel when they're dr driving the P5 performance or P6 performance. By the time you add an operating system, you see a drop off from that perfect linear line. Given that, however, Unixware 2 has the best scalability out there in the market right now. Look at what Intel told us on some of the testing they've been doing with Unixware, that we right now give them the absolute best adherence to that linear line. And I think that's the so what, that the customers simply get the value of what they just paid for. And what that really means in practical reality is that when you have a system with one processor and you add three more processors, ideally, you'd like it to be four times as powerful, four times the amount of throughput four times the database performance. Unixware gets as close as anyone can. What I liked most about Unixware was its price and performance. It's one thing to have created a very price-performing operating system, but if we require a rocket scientist to use it, we haven't done the customers any good. But that's the second win theme of Unixware 2, is making Unixware easy to own. Easy to own also has three aspects. Ease of installation, ease of use, and ease of administration. So let's start with installation. Traditionally, installing Unix on any machine could take hours, right? It's a daunting thing, traditionally, in the industry. But not so with Unixware. With Unixware 2, we've gotten the installation down to under an hour, basically. Yes. And how have we done that? Well, we've done it in several ways. First is something that we call auto-detect. If the operating system can go out and figure out what kind of Ethernet card you have and tell you why doesn't it, instead of getting halfway through the installation routine, then asking you what kind of ENET card you have. Well, you have no idea. The last time you saw the box was three years ago. The only way to find out is to turn the machine off, pull the hood off, pull the card out, look at it, stick it back in, put the hood back on and start all over again. That's not acceptable. It can sit there and go, ha, 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 ha. I know what kind of controller you have and I'm not gonna tell you, or it can tell you. So that's auto detect the peripherals. The next thing it should do is ask you all the questions up front. Don't let me get halfway through it and then ask me, do do you want to install the distributed file system? 
No. Ask me all those things up front. The next thing we did to ease the installation procedure was allow a network install over either IPX or IP. In some of our customer environments, they have what we call replicated machines. They have the need to create 50, 60, 70 machines that look alike very fast. Best answer to that, network install. The other thing that we did was go from three boot floppies down to one. What's the big deal about that? The big deal about that is probably if you've ever been through having to reinstall your machine, that's usually kind of in a panic environment. Somebody's yelling, I want the application, I want the application, you're trying to reinstall the machine. What do you think the odds are that you're going to find disk one of three, disk two of three, and disk three of three? A single boot floppy helps. It's just easier to deal with. So ease of installation. We've made great progress there. I just talked to a customer, one of our Unix masters on Wall Street, who took one of their CNEs who had no idea how to spell Unix, much less install Unixware. We gave them Unixware too. This CNE installed it in an hour and 20 minutes. The president was so excited he called me at home to tell me that that's how quickly they'd been able to install the advanced multiprocessing, you know, the SDK, all of the other different features. So I think we've made some real progress. And what about that quote? Plus, yes, from the PC Week uh, journalist who described Unisquare 2's installation as easier than installing than Windows 3.1. That says quite a lot for Unixware. I think that's a strong testimonial. The second portion of being easy to own would be just ease of use. One of the things that we had prior to Unixware 2 was something called Moolit, Motif to Open Look Intrinsic Toolkit. It allowed you to run time select between an open look look and feel in a motif. In Unixware 2, we've recognized the movement toward the industry standard motif. What I like the best about 2.0 is they've gone to the motif platform. That is the standard platform that's being utilized by the DOD. And uh, that's what all our programmers are being trained to write code in is motif. I won't have to train them in having to go to like program an open look and then come back and program in motif for any other Unix platform because we still have uh, other platforms that we have to integrate with NetWare, and we're doing that through UnixWare. So now we've got X11 R5 and the idea that we've standardized on Motif 1.2.3. That should help ease of use. But there's another aspect of ease of use, uh, the documentation. The current Novell's Guide to Using UnixWare 1.1 is a book about this thick, and it weighs four pounds? Probably about four pounds. Four and a half? Oh, yeah. I want that in my bag while I'm zipping around on airplanes. So the idea is why not put it online? Put the documentation online, all the man pages. But that's just one part of it. The second part is give me a browser. Make it easy for me to navigate the documentation. With Unixware 2, the browser is Dynatext. What else uses Dynatext? Netware. So here you see another theme, the idea of trying to use as much in common between NetWare and Unixware as possible. So Dynatext is one of those first steps. So we've got the online documentation and we've got the browser for it. You also still have the capability to customize that desktop. For some people, it's really important that the little folders be green or that the wallpaper background be a picture of a mountain. You have that capability to customize your desktop and create what we call graphical applets. Plus, Jenny, I'm going to bring us back to performance again um, because the Unix web developers have just done a fantastic job in supporting some of the outstanding PCI mm -hmm. video cards that are out on the market now from Number 9 and from Matrox and from Diamond, from these great companies who are, perhaps we're riding a little bit of the Windows wave, we're getting some uh, capabilities from these peripherals from the Windows side, but that's great. That means that the desktop is crisp and fast and that graphical applications really run and really provide an administrative benefit by being there and performing really well. That's a good point. The third aspect of being easy to own is being easy to administer. Uh, the traditional vision of a Unix system administrator is perhaps somebody with a long ponytail and an earring and black Reeboks who drinks Mountain Dew and eats Twinkies. And I believe that was your persona at one point in life. <laughs> no one's supposed to know about that. <laughs> uh, oops. Well, anyway, the idea, that's certainly still true for a certain portion of the Unix community out there. But we wanted to make it easier to deal with than having to know the internals of a kernel in order to just simply create a printer. So with Unixware, even back in Unixware 1.0, by making Unix graphical, we made it easier to control, made it easier to administer, to set up users, to set up groups, 
to create a printer. Some of the commands there are pretty scary. LP admin, creating a backup tape, CPIO minus OCVB dumb redirect to slash dev slash RMT. I mean... Oh, hold on. Here. <laughs> well, what about if I have a, a netware printer? I mean, uh -huh. that's really a great capability. With the bidirectional, bidirectional printing of netware, you go through the, the graphical printer setup on Unixware, you select the netware server you want, you select the print queue, you click on go, you select the printer type, and off it goes. You've got a new printer You're on your done. system. No command line, no LP atom this, no LP sked this. Everything is taken care of from the desktop. And I don't care if you don't like to use GUIs as a, a Unix engineer. Anyone who's ever set up a printer will, will welcome this capability. All right, so from an admin point, it is putting things through the metaphor, making them easier to do in the first place, providing reasonable defaults. If you've ever had to set up your own Ethernet address, you know how painful it is to just figure out what the current address is. Well, if the machine can go do that for you, why doesn't it? And it does. But I think probably one of the most challenging things to do if you're an administrator is the infamous we overflowed the file partition. This is painful. The idea is that you've gotten bigger than you said you were going to get, so now we have to back off every file, we have to blow away the partition, we have to recreate the partition, then we have to reload the files and pray everything worked. But, meantime, how long has the application been out? How long has that particular operating platform been down? Well, it could be four hours, it could be five hours. Uh-uh. Remember we said business critical is one of the markets for Unixware. A lot of our customers can't accept that four or five hour application outage. What we're doing is, um, it's, it's very mission critical. We can't, uh, we can't really afford to have um, systems going down while we're running cars. and. Uh, and Unix where we felt really good about, about that, you know, and it's, it stood up to the test. This is the capability, this is storage management. This mm -hmm. is online capabilities for growing and shrinking file systems, for mirroring or duplexing file systems, for online defragmentation of, of file systems. And online means no users kicked off the systems, no system reboots. This is on a running system. For those systems that you only want to reboot once a year at Christmas on Christmas Eve or on New Year's Eve, this is the product. A Unixware application server sold into a business critical environment, and generally that's where they exist, should never be without the online data manager. It um, is a fantastic yeah. piece of technology. And don't forget the GUI. I, because what, remember that ease of use is a theme, so give me a graphical interface. It's the coolest stuff. It's a little picture of a disk. It actually allows you to monitor performance. It'll give you a graphical uh, depiction of your volumes, of your disk packs, basically, mm -hmm. and will allow you to monitor performance. And when a system, when a disk subsystem falls below some threshold you've set in performance, it will light up as yellow to give you a warning. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, if it gets even worse, it'll light up as red and you can take appropriate action at that point, either to mirror the disk or to span it across different disk drives. Once again, all of this is online. The other part of that would be uh, not just the data that exists on your application platform, but the operating system itself, the reliability of the OS. Uh, Unixware has a, a key feature called the journaled file system, but what does that really mean? Well, journaling in brief, is the idea of taking the reads and writes going from memory to the disk and putting them into a journal file, caching them basically on the journal file. So the result of this is when you hit the power on your system, you do not lose thing, you do not lose these reads and writes in your volatile RAM, but it's on a disk in a journal file. That means when the system comes up, that journal file is read, and these reads and writes are sent back out to disk and your file system and your file integrity is maintained. This is a hot button with our customers. Unfortunately, for customers to understand the value of having a hardened file system or a journaled file system, they have to have been burned. We had a system crash in the building. They shut the power off without telling anybody. And Unix systems don't like that. And all the other Unix systems on different platforms took three days to come up. And Unix were booted right up clean. They have to have been through some kind of power outage where they spent days reconstructing their operating system. You know, SCO doesn't have this. Multi many of our competitors don't have this, and we do. It's in the base product. It's always been in the base product. It's the default file system. Right, and, and customers, I think, get really excited when they realize that maybe that last outage couldn't have cost them as much if they'd been using Unixware. 
So I think reliability is an important point, but the other thing that I frequently get hit with, and I know you do too, is the idea of security. Um, one of the movements toward Unixware is these mainframers that are coming off a mainframe environment, downsizing, resizing, upsizing, uh, capsizing, whatever you want to call it. The idea that a mainframer is going to look at Unix and open systems as the new application platform. One of the things that those types of MIS managers are very used to is uh, very sophisticated security, protecting their data. Uh, if you've talked to an old IBM 3090 type, you'll find people who think in terms of remote access, restricted access control facility, ACF2, top secret. Unixware is the only product, I think, that has a full answer to that level of security expectation. It's not just authentication, are you who you say you are now, it's also authorization. What should you be allowed to do once you log into an operating system? With Unixware 2, we've got both. You've got basic login and password, just like Netware does, just like any other operating system, multi-user operating system does. But we've got the next level. We've got discretionary access control, access control lists. And if you're used to Netware, you're used to that idea. We also have something called trusted facilities management. In our world, are all system administrators created equal? No. You may not want the same person who does repartitioning your file system to be doing your tape backups. With Unixware 2, it's possible to establish those roles. We also have auditing. When I first started talking about Unix and security, it was 1991. And the only customers who understood things like discretionary access control, access control lists, trusted path, and auditing were those coming out of the federal government. It's come into the commercial world. I just did a customer pre presentation two weeks ago where I got halfway through the pitch and I was talking about security and they said, well, where are your B2 level security features? I almost fell out of the chair. I mean, we've, been, we've had these capabilities for four years, but it is coming through now, the idea that commercial customers want that level of security. But also, if you look forward a little bit, the future, as everyone has acknowledged, is in networks. And the idea of trusted networks is going to be a big topic going forward. And who is, of course, fundamentally interested in the network? That's Novell. So in working with tightening the integration with Netware and Unixware and tightening the security on the network, these benefits will go, will translate over to your applications as well as your basic network services, providing a multi-level security in a WAN, in a LAN, and in the machine itself. We got a commitment from Novell that Unixware and Netware were going to converge. For us, that was a significant uh, <clears throat> choice because right now I have to put two servers out of, out of the hotel, two physical hardware servers. Long term, uh, right now we have 1,850 hotels. We have an ambitious growth plan to go to 3,100 hotels by the 98 time frame. So I know that I'm going to save substantially in hardware costs long term by being able to put both Netware and Unixware on a single server. And my plan really is, going forward, I'm going to be deploying with two servers. As that convergence happens, I can take one of those servers out of my install base and use that in another hotel as I continue my rollout. So you've touched on networks. What else are we doing with networks in Unixware 2? Well, Unixware 2, Unixware in general, is the best connected Unix out there. It deals with traditional internet capabilities, FTP and Telnet and R login, all those crazy commands, but it also allows you to connect to Netware environments seamlessly. That is, transferring files from your Netware server to your Unixware server can be accomplished from the command line as traditional Unix users have, but also through the desktop. Also, the capability of printing to Netware print queues is available with Unixware and vice versa. Right. You By almost caught me there, didn't oh, you? Yeah. Bidirectional print. Um, what about single login, too? I mean, that's an important feature, I think. We already said earlier that one out of every three Netware lands in a Fortune 1000 company right now has Unix in it. All right, so if you have Unix where a network co-resident, wouldn't it be nice to do things like give them a single login so that if I've logged into Unixware and I'm about to go access a printer off of a network server and I'm authenticated to that machine, should we make them log in again? No. Give them a single login, right? Later this year, Novell will introduce network directory services for Unixware. And this is a big win as well for integration of environments and for application programming where you have applications that need to access 
di things on many different servers. Mm -hmm. um, this capability will allow for application programmers and database developers to do truly distributed applications above and beyond what Novell will supply with GroupWise and Tuxedo. And I think NDS, integration into Unixware, brings out another theme that you see coming out of Novell, which is making certain things common between the two products whenever possible. We've already hit the idea that, OK, we have the same online documentation browser, Dynatext. But we also have the same code base for the multiprocessing architecture. Right now, Netware, when it goes multiprocessor, is using the Unixware code base. And then we'll be using the NDS code base to integrate into Unixware. So you see a lot of things coming together, I believe, between the two product lines. The next thing we've got to do for our customers is m give them more and more applications. Again, we've said that for Novell, Unixware is the business critical application platform. What do I mean by business critical applications? Well, these are going to be maybe applications that run your order entry, applications that run your general ledger, applications that are part of your point of sale system, applications that are doing your medical insurance claims processing. The point is that, that applications, the, the idea of business criticality in an application means different things to every business. Right. To Men's Warehouse, for instance, their point of sale systems is fundamentally part of their business critical use of computers. That is, if there are six people waiting online for 10 minutes per order, people are going to start walking away from those counters. With the Unixware product in place, we anticipate cutting our downtime to a very insignificant percentage of the transactions, uh, thereby ensuring the minimization of lost revenue. The ability to deliver good performance to replicate their host system in each store using a very powerful but low cost Intel server running Unixware, running their application that may have been developed on COBOL or C or what have you, that, that enables them to have a true business critical advantage, that is better performance to their cash register operations. Well, it comes back to um, a a philosophy of how customers buy operating systems. And the point is, customers don't buy operating systems. I do not have people at trade shows running up to me going, I have to buy an operating system. What they do buy is the application, right? And with Unixware 2, we've come, uh, again, on a bell curve. You know, we've come way up in the number of applications available just for Unixware itself. Uh, right now, the list is at about 3,500. It is growing rapidly. Um, and that doesn't even count all the DOS-based applications that will run through our merge product. It doesn't count all of the SCO applications that pick up, move over, compile, and they're there. So I think we've come a long way toward answering where are the applications. And another aspect of applications on Unixware is creating customized applications, i.e. becoming an application programmer. And there Unixware and Unixware 2 have many strengths the ability to become an application developer. Well, if you're going to be an application developer, you need development tools. So we'll start with the base operating system. Unix itself comes with hundreds of them. And OK, so maybe some of them aren't particularly intuitive, like awk, sed, grep, yak, lex, or finger. But the point is, they're very powerful. Yes, and one has to think of why engineers like Unix so much. Why don't, why don't they use GUIs all the time? Well, because. Unix, in the Unix, the operating system, the operating environment of the shell itself allows users direct access to system status and to programming within the command line environment. Now, this may not be for everyone, no. but it is a very powerful capability and is lost on systems that require you to do everything with a mouse. Uh, and that's another point, too. While 80% of our customers probably don't want to know about those levels of tools, that other 20% that does need that power, that does need that capability set is probably going to pay a lot of money for it because they're dealing with a really business critical environment. So that's the base operating system. Then you've got something called the software development kit. The software development kit is something you can sell. It's an add-on to Unixware and it comes with third generation language compilers. We've got C, we've got C++ in there. We've also got a graphical debugger. For those of us who have dealt with the C programming language, we know that printf is not an acceptable debug statement. You need something graphical to help you. And we've got a graphical debugger that goes all the way down to thread level.
So we've got a good software development kit, but next level up, maybe I don't want to know a 3GL. Maybe I want to use a development tool. There again, we've got a very strong response. We've got the Unixware Development Solutions Guide. It's a book. It's a list of all these tools that come with Unix that you can buy in addition to Unixware, whether they're fourth generation languages, 4GLs, or case tools, or screen generators, or source code management systems, you name it. We've got it on Unixware. So those are basically the seven win themes that we've got with Unixware 2. And hopefully you've picked up along the way some of the reasons that customers will care about industry-leading price performance ease of ownership, reliability, security, application availability, network transparency, and device support. Okay, let's sell this thing now. Yeah, go. <laughs> NT didn't work. It uh, 3.1 was terrible, out of the box. Uh, didn't integrate with uh, NetWare, which is our standard solution. I installed Windows NT, and it wouldn't do what I wanted to, so I got mad and I tore the drive out and I threw it across the room. <laughs> True story. Now I take the role of a reseller. Jenny, how do we identify Unixware opportunities? Good question. I think there are three things you can do to help move your customer from suspect prospect to close. The first thing is to focus on the market verticals and horizontals where Unix is already doing well. That's just going to increase your percent chance of getting a hit. The second thing, look at the usage scenarios for Unixware now. How are customers already deploying Unixware? Third thing is what I call the 20 questions. We've already said that customers really don't buy operating systems. What they buy are solutions to business problems, applications. So how do I find the application opportunity? OK, let's turn first to the verticals. Um, one of the most common of uh, applications of Unix technology in the vertical markets is in manufacturing. But also, there are great opportunities in federal government, medical and dental, uh, banking and finance, state and local government, as well as scientific and engineering. I don't think things like uh, verticals like scientific and engineering or federal government should be any surprise. Those are long standing uni Unix verticals. The thing that kind of surprised me was the entree of like healthcare and hospital administration systems. That really stems from the fact that what Unix and Unixware provide, that is, high availability, security, price performance, all the, all the win statements we've already talked about today. But in turning to the horizontal markets, the ones that are really stand out, of course, are database and application serving. And we talk about database servers on Unixware. We cover all the, the major databases and we'll set great uh, performance uh, records probably on most of them this year. Also, as an application server, that's somewhat of a nebulous term and it means different things to different people. But on the Unix side of the house, an application server is adding some type of decision support logic either before or after the database. What happens when that database is upgraded? Well, you may want to light some red, little red light on someone's console, or you may want to print an invoice. Mm -hmm. This is typically where Tuxedo is found, yeah. transaction processing environments where you have not just simple graphical client and database server, but you have client server server applications that, that are deployed. How about um, some of the newer arenas in the horizontal market, like communications? Yes, well, certainly the internet is one of the hot topics. That's okay. not the only aspect of communications, of course, because the, the, new, uh, the new generation of telephony applications, of course, will be based both on NetWare and Unixware, since NetWare provides that telephony platform, that API set that is rapidly gaining acceptance in the industry. The applications by companies like AT&T are bringing Unix technology to do applications that work with the infrastructure that NetWare provides in this area. But it's not limited to that scope as well. The Internet Gateway is a typical one where people want to put an FTP site or a World Wide Web server or some mm -hmm. other type of Internet service to their customers or to their partners. Novell is certainly a leader in this one, and anyone who would like to uh, see this technology really implemented um, fairly effectively should co connect to Novell's World Wide website or FTP site. That is at www.novell.com and ftp.novell.com. Uh, the last one I thought was kind of interesting is imaging, um, because imaging ties back to, I think, explicitly a couple of the verticals, such as legal, finance, and claims processing. The fact that we're moving to handwritten recognition, uh, that we're moving to actually capturing whole documents, health care information, 
patient records as images and manipulating those images. And that's very demanding on an operating system to be able to manipulate something uh, like a binary large object. But that's something where Unixware does really well also. This is also fairly typical in the legal environment where you have, by definition, a business that is paper bound, that it deals with large amounts of data that needs to be searched quickly, that needs to be archived effectively, that need to be at basically at your at your disposal whenever possible. And that's another thing that's fundamental to Unixware. So we've already started to hit some of the usage scenarios uh, where Unixware could play really well. How about a couple of others? Well, certainly manufacturing, as we mentioned, uh, work sh workflow automation is another claims processing in the insurance area. We mentioned healthcare, hospital automation. This is becoming a very large field. And th another thing to, to uh, keep in mind as resellers in dealing with these types of solutions is that the, the database you choose um, often has vertical applications that are associated with it. So underneath Oracle or Progress, there already exist, exist health, cl health claim applications and legal mm -hmm. applications. So right. it's another kind of aspect to it. Other usage scenarios include, once, once again, a downsizing platform from an AS400 or from a traditional uh, mainframe environment. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where a lot of people are turning to Tuxedo as a solution to their transaction processing, but also in their, their distributed object-oriented type of programming environments. Okay, George, how about some recent customer successes that fit back into some of these usage scenarios? Well, if we look at the point of sale environment, for instance, two come directly to mind. One of the first is Overland West, one of the largest Hertz franchises in the United States. Mm -hmm. They have a business, of course, renting cars to customers, and they created their application called Capture on Unixware. And at the time, I decided, coming in, into Overland, I decided I was just going to take a fresh look at all the Unixes that were out there. So uh, during the course of, of looking at all of them, um, I became really convinced that I wanted System 5.4.2. I wanted the Veritas file system. Um, I wanted what I consider to be pure Unix and leading edge Unix. And as I kept digging into all this stuff, you know, I realized SCO was over here doing their own thing and this, and I decided I just want to go with the people that own the license and that are what I consider doing the best things with it. And this is a system that uses Unixware to provide that application to connect into their existing network environment, but also connects back into a legacy mainframe that holds the worldwide reservation system. That is a, a database application, but also a, a custom written application. I think what's important here is that you are starting to see Netware and Unixware come together, along with other Novell products. Something to always keep in the back of your mind, obviously, is that you're never just selling one Novell product, usually. You could be selling multiple. That Unixware can become a pull-through for additional Novell products, like Netware, like Land Workplace for DOS. How about Holiday Inn? Holiday Inn has a stand, uh, purchased a standalone front desk system that was Netware-based. We needed a multitasking operating system to integrate that system with Holodex, our central reservation system back in Atlanta. Um, <clears throat> we were looking at OS2 and an array of products to make OS2 and Netware work together, uh, about five software packages total, land workplace uh, and some other things. We could have done that route or everything that we needed was available in Unixware. It was a cleaner implementation, uh, lowered our costs, and uh, that's the route that we chose to go with. Holiday Inn had settled on a netware-based uh, customer check-in system, but also wanted to replicate an application that had existed on large mainframes and other, and other legacy Unix systems. So they wanted to replicate this environment in each and every one of their hotels and wanted to look for a very cost-competitive, yet powerful and scalable mm -hmm. system. And scalability in this application is, is the uh, mission critical aspect of it because they have hotels that have 15 rooms up to 1500 rooms so they needed a platform that would scale from a very small system a very minimal system to a quite a large system and Unixware provided that plus with the integration of the netware environment they were able to go into their existing environment mm -hmm. and just lay Unixware in there 
those are two where Unixware is very, uh, somewhat visible. Uh, there, we've also got wins where Unixware isn't exactly visible, where we call it more like an embedded system. The customer bought Unixware to bundle underneath an application, like our recent win with AT&T. AT&T has something, a voicemail offering. They call it Audix, and to many of us, it's our lifeline, especially if we travel. What they've picked Unixware for is the basis for Audix. So you will have over 4,000 servers worldwide, Audix servers, that will be running on Unixware. You just won't know it. Yes, and we turn to larger companies. We've had some wins with Chrysler, for instance, who are re realizing great economies of scale with the Unixware product because of the great performance, but also the great cost once again. If I am deploying 5,000 systems, then the difference of several hundred dollars in my operating system and my hardware costs is extremely significant. And that is not lost in even smaller customers, where, where 10 Unix boxes will cost thousands less on Intel than on some other proprietary Project. chip manufacturer. All right, so far we've talked about some of the verticals, the customers, the wins, the usage scenarios. The next part is the 20 questions to finding the application opportunity. The first thing I usually start with is where's the database? Is it Oracle? Is it Informix? Is it Progress? Is it Sybase? Those are all Unix-based databases, but there could be a mainframe-based database like DB2, for example, or IMS. If it's a Unix-based database, whose Unix is it on? You know, you, it might be on HP, it might, might be on IBM, it might be on Sun. But the good point about those types of environments is these applications often pick up and move to Unixware pretty easily. The next question is, how did the application get there in the first place? Did we buy it off the shelf? If they bought it off the shelf, the first thing you should head for is the Yes Resource Guide to find out if it's already available on Unixware. And if it's not, call the fax back number. We'll work on getting that particular application moved to Unixware. But also, you have to decide on your own company. Do you have development resources? Do you have engineers that write code? If this is not part of your business, then you've got to either partner with people who do or act as integrators only or work with prepackaged options, either based on a vertical market on, on an existing database package or something offered in shrink wrap. Mm -hmm. If they didn't buy it shrink wrapped, well, it had to be customized. And if it was customized, somebody had to write it. Did they write it? If so, how did they write it? Did they use a 3GL like C or C++? The SDK would be very attractive there. Or did they use a tool? Was it a 4GL or a case tool? So again, go to the Unixware Development Solutions Guide and see if that particular tool is available. If they didn't write it, maybe they used an integrator. Maybe they went to a partner to help them create the application. Find out who the partner was. Novell has a whole division called the Enterprise Solutions Division, who's there to help us influence companies like Anderson Consulting, EDS, Coopers, with these deals with our technologies. So those are just some sample questions to keep in the back of your mind as you're trying to find the application opportunity. So pick your vertical, pick your horizontal, and keep in mind the pull-through revenue that comes along, not simply with Novell products like Land Workplace and GroupWise, but also in your ability to sell your services, to contract your services as consultants or integrators. SCO was not using the uh, current release of Unix, uh, and their price and performance did not match Unix work. So, phew, out of the way. So now you've heard a little about where Novell is headed with Unix. Maybe at this point it'd be helpful to revisit those questions that we started this presentation with. For me, they were, is Novell committed to Unix? By now I hope you figure out, yes, definitely Novell is committed to Unix. Second question was, can Unixware go into the enterprise? With Unixware 2 and its multi-processing capabilities, with the business critical applications, the answer again is yes. The third. Will Novell help us against the competition? Throughout this presentation, we've mentioned several key differentiators for Unixware over the competition. So again, the answer is yes. Let's turn to those reseller questions. What is Unixware? Unixware is System 5 Unix, plain and simple. How does it integrate with my netware environments? You can trade files back and forth over the desktop, through the command line, or through APIs. You can trade mail back and forth using SMTP or MHS. You can print bidirectionally. We will also introduce NDS for Unixware in 1995 and Netware server capabilities for a single box solution. Thirdly, is Unixware powerful enough? Unixware in 1995 will break 
AIM, SPEC, and TPC price performance and performance records. Yes, it is a very capable database and a great application server. But perhaps one of the overarching questions is, what will USG, i.e. Novell, do to help you sell Unixware? Let's start with the business opportunity kit. Within that will be several sales tools, presentations, scripts to get you through a Unixware presentation. There's also the idea of the Yes Resource Guide and the Unixware Development Solutions Guide. Also, we provide fax back capabilities as well as collateral for all the different products. We provide performance collateral as well as competitive collateral. So you've got the right product at the right time with the right positioning in the right markets and with the right customer potential. So why are you sitting there watching videos?